Let's draw this diagram to represent this question. I have two points here, A and B. So X, Y, Z are going to leave point A and they will all arrive point B at the end of the question. So the first part where X gives a leaf to Y, so Y is not move, actually moving. So it's depending on the X speed. So X and Z will move. So the first time frame is represented by the movement of X and Z. And this will give us this. Where X moves towards this point and drops Y off. So Y will continue walking after X has dropped Y off. Now dropping Y off, X will immediately move back in the opposite direction to meet Z. So the second time frame will be Z continue to walk and X will move back to meet X, sorry, to meet Z at this point and to pick up him up. Now at the same time, Y is also continuing its journey. So Y will continue walk. So anything that happens in all these blue arrows are have it having the same time taken. So the third part would simply just be after X picks up Z and following X speed straight to the end point B. So likewise, after X and Z meets, Y will also follow, which means continue walking towards point B. And they will all end at B. So this will be the journey taken by X and Z, which is X speed. Now it's given that in the question that Y walks a distance of 2.8 km. So we can bring down this meeting point and say that this will be also be 2.8 km. Now notice that the time taken for Y to walk this 2.8 km has this blue arrow and green arrow. Now during this blue arrow, X moves back to this meeting point to pick up Z. And this green arrow for the motion of X would be picking up Z and moving all the way to B. Now from this part over here, we have the distance moved by y. Now we also have the speed of y. Because y is walking at a speed of 8 km per hour. So we should find the time first. So given that time, distance over speed, 2.8 km, divided by 8 km per hour, which gives us 7 over 20 hours. So this 7 over 20 hour will represent the time taken for the blue arrow and the green arrow, which is the second part of the, the journey and the third part of the journey. Now for the same time, 7 over 20 hour, X moves back following this blue arrow to this meeting point, picks up the X, and moves all the way to B. So if we follow this time to take the distance, because distance is speed times time, so this will give us the distance traveled by X. Right? So the distance traveled by X would be 56 km per hour 
times 7 over 20 hour which gives us 19.6 km Next, following this 19.6 km, which is the distance moved by x from here to here, the blue arrow, and the green arrow. Notice that this portion is overlapped. So we can find each of this portion by taking the difference 16, sorry, 19.6 minus 2.8 km, which is twice of this distance already then divided by 2. This will give us 8.4 km. Next, we also notice that the ratio of the speed of x and z which is 56 to 7 in simplest form will be just 8 to 1 now this is an important clue because at the same time taken meaning that they have the same time taken from a certain place to another position the ratio of distance will also be 8 is to 1 Now looking at this blue arrow and this blue arrow, they actually have the same time taken as well. So this blue arrow is moved by x. So we'll use 8 units to represent this distance. And this blue arrow moved by z, we'll use 1 unit to represent this distance. So we can now calculate this total distance which is 9 units. So 8 units as 8.4 km 1 unit would be 1.05 and 9 units would be 9.45 km next we look at the first part of the journey where the time taken for the red arrows are the same which means that x would travel to the meeting point to drop off y and z moving to this point So let us represent the ratio of distance, which is 8 is to 1, but in different representation. So 8, let's call it parts, and one part. Keeping in mind that if the time taken is the same, for x to move from here, point A, to this point where it drops off y, and for z to this point, where x is going to drop off y but z will be continue walking so the ratio of distance will be the same as the ratio of the speed which is 8 is to 1 now we can clearly see now that between these 8 parts and 1 part there's a difference of this which is 7 parts okay. and this 7 part answer has been found already so we can just simply equate 7 parts 9.45 km which gives us one part 1.35 km now question asked how far does z walk looking at the diagram z only walk for this one part and one unit because the rest of it which is the green arrow is when x picks up z so this will be following x speed 
So Z only walks for one unit and one part distance. So adding them up, we can easily get the answer. One unit plus one part. 1.05 plus 1.35 a distance of 2.4 km Zach walks.